you my brothers and sisters. You see, hey, <laughs> hey, you my brothers and sisters. How you guys doing this evening? It's been another beautiful day. I'm sorry, I just washed my face. There's just water. Um, how you guys doing? I know so many of y'all are going through so much, and I just want to encourage you guys today with some with some good encouragement in the scriptures, you guys. And uh, I know so many of y'all are going through a real tough time. I mean, it's it's, it's really hard for you guys right now, but I just want to let you guys know that Jesus is there for you, and I'm going to give you guys some scriptures that's going to encourage you guys and just uplift you and to, to show you that the Lord is there and that He cares. You know, the reason why it's so hard right now is God is He's sifting out those who, who are really doing His will from those who He's just sifting right now, you know. Either you're all in or, or, or you're falling away. And um, I was going through some hard battles, man. And <laughs> I had to call Brother Mike. I'm like, Brother Mike, you know. And I don't mind, you know, admitting my folly before anyone, you know. Um, I was falling to lust and uh, pornography like three times. And I was just like, I, I was so lost and distraught. And uh, it just brought me to a level like, man. I have got to find out what this was. Why am I here? Anytime I fall in lust or, you know, back to that flesh, it lets me know that I'm in myself and I'm not in Christ. Every time, you know, and I don't fall to lust often. But in these last days, especially this last month, if you've been falling, it always leads to a, an even bigger fall. Like, okay, like if I fall to lust uh, one time, those spirits are coming after you. They're trying to tear you apart. Jesus doesn't love you. Then, 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 then find yourself lusting again. Then again, then again, then again, then again, then again. And I was so happy that the ruin of my house wasn't great. You know, because we were talking about those who return in the ruin of the house would be great. But it wasn't. And uh, I just thank God for that because, uh, man, we know what what lust does, you know, and uh, pornography and all that, how it just, it just it destroys you, it destroys your temple, you know, and, and it destroys where God, where God lays inside of you, you know, so if you're falling to lust, you know, rebuke those, rebuke the thoughts and the images, first of all, if you're, if you're battling lust and uh, you find yourself losing them, ask yourself, you know, what am I doing when these images pop up in my mind? You gotta rebuke them, and you gotta get on your knees. You can't just, oh man, I see these images. All right, I gotta do it. You know, you gotta, you gotta rebuke it, and you gotta get on your knees, guys. That's how you battle, and that's how you start winning because you're showing God that what I don't want to do this. When you look at it, and and you just, you know, as soon as a, an image pop up or something, you're not really fighting it, you know. So when when the images come up, rebuke it and get on your knees and say, God, I don't want this. You know, if you made a way for me to, to you know, act, you know, besides these last days, you know, God enabled me to, to have victory over lust, as long as I'm in His will. But if I ever find myself in the flesh, in my own will, I know, I know it sounds weird, but I cannot control lust on my own. And if God is not there in my life, I can't control it. It, it is, we know Jezebel. That spirit is no joke. You know, so it's not weird because, you know, it says through God, all things are possible. Well, with man, it's impossible. Without God in me, how can we conquer something that's more powerful than our flesh? You know, but it's not more powerful than the spirit, right? So again, you know, if you're compromising, you know, find yourself compromising a lot. You know, goodness, that is such a big deal, you know, because, man, we're in these final seconds. You must... Truly, and don't worry about what you're doing or where you're falling at or or, or, the, or the future or, or, or your past. Day by day, like today, did I give God my all? You know, and, and you know, when, when, you're, when you're in tomorrow, did God have my all? You know, do not worry about things that, that may hinder you. Like uh, I was worrying today, I was like, God, you know. I'm scared that uh, I might do this or do that. And I found myself worrying about the future and not right now. 
the only person who worries about the future is Satan because he doesn't know what what's going to happen to him in the future you know he doesn't know the future but God knows our future he already finished our race now we just have to walk it out isn't that amazing that the race is already finished and all we got to do is trust in our Lord and have faith in him and carry on and carry our cross and deny ourselves and that's also a point man deny yourself if you want to be fully in God fully in his will you have to deny yourself and uh, I found myself doing that I was watching one of my old TV shows and ah oh, God and as you guys can see all this video really is is God's patience with this with, with this with this surgery you know you know, if the ruin of that house was about to be great, and God stopped it, He stopped it. You know, He so mercy and picked me up, and I still had more battles. I had to deny myself, and the will of starting one to a girl was starting to come back, and a, a wife and a child, and I'm just like, man, because I'm only 20, and I'm just like, man, I never got to live this life of putting God first and you know you know you know the Christian motto, you know, God first, family, you know, a nice house, and, you know. The thing is I can go to either point in this. The thing is either we gave up our lives to be a servant for the one who died for us. Or we can look at it as I gave up my life so that I can enjoy a life in Christ in heaven but right now I'm gonna live for him I'm gonna forsake my will and my life for the kingdom of God because he deserves that and he's worthy you know at first it was with fear like uh, man I don't know if I'm gonna make it I'll just die to myself and just you know give him all but now it's just his grace his patience his mercy all the things that he does for us even today and then what he did from the beginning he came down here in our image and died for us. He was the son of man. He created us. He came to his own and his own did not know him and died for all of our sins. That's why it's so important that I deny myself. Because while I'm living for myself, like if I'm watching a movie, and this is not for those who, you know, if you watch movies and not if, uh, unless, you know, you grieve in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit tells you not to right then, but it's not to those who watch movies, but me, can't watch it and it's, it, and it's not a bad thing you know it's not a bad thing because while I'm watching that movie a movie about an hour and a half long during that hour or, or, or in some of it definitely longer than that that's a short film well, about, about the same time. but while I'm watching that movie somebody could be meeting me Christ could be I could be in Christ for that hour you know and we all watch TV sometimes but once you're at that place where you, where you just know that Christ needs you all, you wouldn't even want to watch TV. I remember the only time I ever wanted to watch TV, even now, is at night when I'm about to go to sleep. You know, I don't want to watch a movie, any other movies in the world. You know, I'm a movie guy, so, you know, I don't will to do any of these things now. I don't will to have a girlfriend or anything because that's not the will of, of the Lord, so it's not my will. But there's so many, so much harvest out there. And people who really need it. You know, and we're that vessel. You know, that's why it's so easy to deny ourselves and say, Well, God, you died for me and you showed me mercy and you showed me grace. I'm gonna I'm gonna die to myself and live completely in you. So that no matter where I go, you're able to talk to someone and you're, you're able to pull them out of the fire through me. I thought lust was the best feeling in the world and smoking marijuana. But the best feeling in the world is being a trustworthy servant of God. And I kid you not, knowing that you're trusted by the Lord with anything. Even if you're trusted by a little, you should be what? Trusted with much. And I just found this out before I failed to lust and something happened. I found out that, you know, pride, you know, pride, God rebukes the prideful, but exalts the what? The humble. So, pride, man, and my pride is so bad. I'm so happy that, you know, my, I, 
I reached out to a brother and that's why I fell in that lust because of my pride. And and if I'm so prideful in you know, these points, and, and, and it's a, it's an ignorant pride. It's not a pride that you acknowledge like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. And it's a pride where you have to be broken down and see that no, this is not what you do. I am your Lord, your God. And no one is before me, not even yourself. And that's what I have to learn. I am not before God. You know, I can't do things on my own will. I'm his servant. You know, I'm his child, but I'm his servant. You know, before anything, I'm his servant. And I, and I have to be humble at the feet of God. You know, he could destroy me. You know, soul and body. That's why it's so important to be humble before the Lord. Not only because you fear Him, but so that He can pour into you willingly. You know? And that's also a compromise. If you're compromising and give yourself only half effort, you know, God can't fully pour into you because you're not complete in Him. You're not giving your complete all, so how can, can He be complete in you? He would never leave you nor forsake you, but if you're not complete in Him, giving Him your all, He can't completely pour into you. You know, it's just impossible. Not, well, not for the king, but you know what I'm saying. Give him your all. And um, like I said, I know you guys are taking a beating. I just want to encourage you guys that uh, so many of our thoughts are not even from us. And that's what I figured out today. You know, I mean, it's, I, you know, we all know that some thoughts are not from the enemy. But just how much they affect you is what I found out today. Like, I was talking to my recruiter. I was talking to my recruiter about Jesus Christ. Can you believe that? And the enemy would come in and, and try to make me cry for like, yeah, I'm talking to my recruiter about God. But there's no way in history or in the world that I can talk to my recruiter about God if it wasn't for him. Our recruiter is, is above us. You know, he, he's at authority. You know, so I, I had to humble myself and say, man, if I didn't have Christ as much as I did now, that, that boldness, that, you know, that, that love that Christ has for them, I would not be able to do that. That's a recruiter. You don't talk to a recruiter about God, but God enabled me to do it. He allowed me to break the boundaries of the flesh and get straight to the spirit because that's his child. He may be a recruiter, but he's my brother in Christ. Come on, where where does pride, where should pride exist in that? We should be giving God, I should be giving God glory for that. Thank you, God, for, for enabling me to speak to my recruiter. You know? But it's just, again, ways that the enemy will try to get you, man. But we don't worry about, you know, the, the schemes of the devil. That's what I want to talk about for those who can do that, you know? So much of it is, are you going to make the rapture? You won't worry, do you? None of us are worthy to escape what's coming. We, it's, it's only by what? God's grace and His mercy that, that protects us. That, and, and so much that He abides in us as well. That's all His grace and mercy. Do you understand that we were dust at one point and He is God? We were dust. Of the, look at the dirt. That's what you were at one point. But God poured His living spirit into you. None of us deserve to go up there with the with the one true God. Come on. Not one of us. And when the devil, you know, he says, well, you're not worthy. You're darn right I'm not worthy. But my God is in me. And I have Christ because, and I have life because I have Christ. You know? And I shall abide in him, in the house of God forever. Not because of anything I've done, but because my God loves me. It's not because of anything you've done, but it's only because that he loves you. You know, Paul talks about, I don't love him because of something else, but I love him because he first loved me. Before I was even created. Before the foundation of the world. That's what you tell the devil. You darn right I'm not worthy. But my God has accounted me worthy by his love and his mercy. By the blood that he shed for me. That I shouldn't have to die with those who do not believe. Because we believe in our Lord and our Savior. Man. Oh, God. Do not worry. Again, I'm going to give you guys some scriptures. Uh, um, and if you find yourself to where 
you're not hearing from God, enter into a prayer closet, no matter how big it hurts or how small, and just play some gospel music and just say thank you. Because the enemy wants you to think that God is not there for you. Or, or when you don't hear him, or when you don't feel him, and you're just like, oh God, don't get weary. But get into your prayer closet and you start praising him. Say, thank you, God. Just thank you. I know that you're there. I may not feel you, and I may not hear from you, but glorify him. You know, I've had my battles to where I didn't feel God, but I say, God, I know that you're there. I know that you're there. You know, and we must just continue to be steadfast in the Lord, no matter what we feel or hear or what we think. You know, it's knowing that God is there for you always. You know, and He will never leave you nor forsake you, even when you do wrong. So, how much more when you're doing good? You know, so if you find yourself where you just, where you just don't know, into your prayer closet and just play some gospel music and just thinking and praising for who He is. And um, yeah, let me show you guys this because it's getting kind of long. And this, and this is going to really help a lot of us who are panicking so much in these last days of, you know, oh, what if I did this last time and I did this the other day and I don't know if I'm worthy. And all these things, you know. But this right here, it will set you straight. It will set you free, brother. Brothers and sisters. <laughs> Oh man, I'm so glad I got to this. I'm sorry you guys. I pray that you guys stick with me with this long video. But even more so, you know, I was talking about earlier about how are we saved? How are we able to, to go in the rapture? And this is amazing, you know. It's Ephesians 2, 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Amen. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. Man, how awesome. We're not saved by our deeds. We're not saved because we did this. It is a gift from God. That if we believe in his son, we shall have eternal life. And not see his, his, his judgment on the world. It was what? A gift from God. Faith in Christ is what saves us. Not our deeds. Not, not what you did last week, not how much you love, but faith. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I've had troubles too, you know, just having faith. This is a little bit much as a mustard seed sometimes. Man. Okay, I'm not going to take up too much of you guys' time today, but uh, what it said was, cast all your anxieties on the Lord because He cares. And uh, that's exactly what it said. Uh, let me see if I can find it because, you know, we always talk um, through scriptures and not through our own lips because what we say does not matter. Okay, it's going to be 1 Peter 5, 7. Ain't the internet good? 1 Peter 5, 7. No, it's just in Peter 2. And again, this is probably going to be a 20-minute video. I'm sorry, you guys. But just because I love you guys, and so does the Lord. And I've been waiting to feed you guys so much, and uh, I really couldn't help but to come on here and just encourage you guys. And I just thank you guys for just being patient. Hmm. 
Alright. I know. Okay, so first Peter five seven. Cast all your anxiety all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And uh be alert uh, and, and of sober mind, your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, looking to looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the whole world are going throughout the camp, the same kind of suffering. So much I've been able to stand at some point. Well, I'm always able to stand stronger when I know that I'm not in this battle alone. When I see my brothers suffering along with me, that encourages me. Because sometimes you feel so alone. Like, man, I'm the only one suffering. I'm all alone. I'm getting beat up by the devil and all these thoughts. But you look to your right and you see me. Look to your left and see Brother Mike or, or Divine Wind or anyone else that, that's battling. We are a family trying to go to our home. You know, it says about Abraham and Sarah, they thought of themselves as aliens to this world. Foreigners. Because they knew that their true home was in heaven. How much more us? Not, not how much more, but also with us. You know, when, when you're truly a child of God, you say, man, this is not my home. <laughs> oh, man. And, my brothers and sisters, we're about to go home. Don't let the devil take your seat away from you. Don't even let your own fleshly mind take your seat away from you. But have faith in the Lord your God because He will make a way for you. He will help you to be content and keep enduring. No matter what happens in this world, even as, as these things start to happen, glorify God. And say, God, every sign that happens, you get closer and closer. If the start marker drops, he gets closer. If the bombs drop, we get closer. If we get persecuted for the name of God, endure. Because our God is worthy. Amen. And no matter what, after this body, we step into eternity. How awesome is that? How awesome is that? No matter what happens. No matter what mistakes, no matter what the devil says to me, after I step into the other side, whether by death or through the rapture, whether through persecution or the Lord taking me himself, we are about to step into eternity, and this is our time. The Lord is here. You see him in the sun. You see him making signs right now telling people that he is here. And as the things happen in this world, you just glorify God and you say, God, you're just getting closer. Store up your food, store up your water, just in case something does happen. Nothing have to hap nothing hap nothing has to happen for the rapture. But yet we don't know what the future holds. But we know that what? Those who endure shall receive their crown. Amen. Don't think that you might not go through something because you might. Just give all glory to God that you're not getting beheaded right now for your faith like those in the Middle East. And don't forget to pray for them because those are our brothers and sisters too. Pray for them. Pray for our brothers and sisters, man. I saw one of our brothers and sisters over there get beheaded and he said, just one shot, just one shot to the head and I broke down almost. And I said, I'm going to remember you and I'm going to hug you. None of us have to get killed right now for our faith. But we know that it's coming. We know that it's coming. So pray for them. You know, and uplift them. Ask God for to help them feel courage as they're about to step into persecution in their last breath on this earth. And thank God that you're not going through that same thing yet. Yes, we go through trials. Yes, we get beat up. But we're not getting persecuted yet. We're not... You know, you know, you know. I believe it's um, somewhere in, in, in the word. And, um, I, I, I wanted to say Peter, but I don't think that's Peter. I believe it's Paul. He said, "You haven't come to draw in blood yet, so endure." Not in those perfect words, but in, in those words, you know. So endure and keep praying for each other. Keep seeking God and keep having faith, because without faith we can't please our God. Sometimes you just need. This little bit of no, that, that, 
da, da, da. even tighter even tighter that even that much faith you know and my brothers and sisters even from the beginning I've told you guys the things that I'm going through yet God was merciful enough for me to not only uplift me but to help me to come up here and keep pouring into the body of Christ that is the mercy of our Lord and our God that is our Lord and our King Jesus Christ no one is worthy of him but he loves us so we're going to keep on going and if you're going through something call on a brother I'm going to leave my number down here just in case anyone needs me you know I'm always here and uh just know that we're all going through this battle together you know like I said you know I failed three times and the Lord lifted me up and it wasn't just I was praying I called out to a brother I said brother I need it I need the Lord right now I need you and he prayed for me and it was brother Mike and I'm gonna leave his channel on, on the bottom below just in case anybody needs prayer you know a powerful righteous man of God you know but I'm so happy that we're family that we're all going through it together so many of you guys are just just hanging in there by the limbs of your limbs but I'm telling you hold on hold on because we know that this is it we know that this is it brothers and sisters this is it no matter what you go through no matter what you see just say this is it no matter what you may see no matter what you may hear just say that this is it at any moment our Lord is coming and if you will we ask him because he know that you know that he will give you in abundance if you really ask for a sharpened heart and a sharpened mind and you know that he will give it to you in abundance ask him to refill your fountain and you know that he will do it in abundance that is uh, the love of our God alright you guys man be blessed and just keep on striving in the Lord because we know that this is it you may be here for uh, whatever but this is it this is it you guys go out there and tell someone about the Lord go out there and glorify your God in these last days you know what, what you couldn't do before start doing now because we know that this is it this is it no matter what happens no matter what we see our Lord is here you see him beyond the sun the world doesn't see him but those who are his, they see him. They see the sign. And we know that this is it. So my brothers and sisters, again, if you need prayer, I'm going to leave Brother Mike's uh, link down there. And uh, he, He's a good brother. He's always going to pray for you. He's a faithful servant of God. And, uh, I'm also going to leave my number down there just in case anybody needs prayer. And, uh, just know that you're not alone and we're going through it together. I'm sorry that the video is so long, but... As I pour into you to just take you because it's not me, it's our Lord. And He wants those to endure. Man, because nobody wants to be left behind. But after you're tired, you're tired. But remember, those who shall endure shall receive a crown of gold to lay at the feet of our Lord who saved us. Oh my goodness. Oh God. Come on, y'all. Y'all got it. Come on. Strive a little stronger. Come on. You got it. You got this. You got this. Overcome the world because our our Lord already overcame the world. You got this. Have faith and endure. Because those who endure shall receive their crown. I love you guys so much. Be blessed by this message. And keep on striving. I love you guys.